Now let's have a look at some of the new charting features. Um, here's my chart that I'm going to display quarterly sales results in. And uh, the way that I've set this chart up, I'm using the, the names and values properties, which are bound to fields in my program. And this will allow me to populate the, the names and values for the chart using a comma-separated list in my program. So the, the names are going to correspond to an element of the chart. So the names will be Q1, Q2, Q3, et cetera, for the quarters. And then the values are the sales totals for, for each quarter. Um, this is nothing new. Uh, what is new is that this chart is going to be interactive now. So I can click on a quarter and display uh, a monthly breakdown. The way that I'm going to do that is through the new chart response property that you see here. I've bound this to uh, a field that's called quarter. And um, this is a, a field that will be populated with the name of the data point on the chart that the user clicked on. Uh, whenever the user clicks on, on something, this field quarter is going to be populated, in my case, with a quarter number, one, two, three, four. And control is going to return to my RPG program, which can then process that. Um, in my case, it's going to process that by showing another chart that I have placed behind this one uh, to show the monthly breakdown. And it will select which one to display as it needs to. Um, the other um, new feature that Scott mentioned are the chart options. Um, this allows us to do any number of interesting things which there were not interfaces for uh, previously. Uh, for example, the charting component has options that I can use to control uh, number rounding and number scaling, captions, titles, and, and various things that I never had an interface to before. Now using this, I can feed in all of these options. As Scott mentioned, uh, they're documented on the Fusion Charts website, and there's even a link here that I can use to see what all of the possibilities are. And um, in my case, I'm using this to put some nice uh, captions onto the chart. So I'm, I'm putting a caption on top, and then I'm also uh, giving some axis titles that will display on the left and on the bottom. And then I'm also um, using another option to um, to add a uh, currency symbol since these are going to be sales figures. So let's have a look at, um, at the program that would drive this. So this uh, RPG program is going to display the screen up here. And then what's interesting about this is that it's going to check this field quarter. Remember, that's the field that was bound to my chart response. And this will give the program an indication of what, uh, you know, that the user clicked on the chart. So if the user didn't click on it, it's going to load the quarterly sales by, by default. And it does that by fetching the records using an SQL statement and building the data into a comma-separated uh, list here. Now, when you do uh, click on the quarter, it's going to run into the uh, load monthly sales routine. And this routine is going to make use of the, uh, the quarter number that you clicked on to basically control the range of months which will display in the chart. And then it again builds the data into uh, these comma-separated lists. So what it will look like uh, if I run this example, um, if I select a company and select a division, my quarterly sales will display. And now the chart is interactive, so I can click on it. And now I can see the monthly breakdown uh, within that quarter. So this can be used to make uh, the charts uh, much more interactive. Uh, the users can click on them. And, and also, um, it, it exposes a lot of new uh, options uh, for the chart, such as the captions and the access titles and the, the currency amount.